Hey guys! As many of you know, I am a firm believer in the idea that you can make a good movie about anything. With a little bit of imagination, you can take something as simple as a toy robot and turn it into a vast universe of creative possibilities. With that in mind, we must ask ourselves one very important question here. What do you do with the Hug a Bunch? When you hug a the Hug a Bunch was a line of dolls from 1985, which were based on characters from Hallmark greeting cards, whose only gimmick was that. Well, they were very huggable. Yeah, that's about it. How do you make a movie about these things which have no real story or character behind them? I don't know, but because they were reasonably popular and they were conceived in the 1980s, a movie adaptation was unavoidable. Our made-for-TV magnum opus begins on... pretty much every house from every movie, as we mean our main character, Bridget. She tells us about how she and her brother Andrew recently were given some presents, but it's not their birthday, Christmas, or any other kind of special occasion. He's very nice. I think I'll name him Sweet William. And for some reason, Bridget's the only one in her family with a southern accent. Why? Why? Because we love you. Because you've been such a good girl. But not that good. She narrates to us that her grandmother has been living with them since their grandpa died, but her Aunt Ruth wants to put her into a retirement home. And I gotta give the movie some credit for making Aunt Ruth a nurse. It would be too easy to simply make her a straight-up villain where she wants to get rid of Grandma just for the sake of getting rid of her. But as a nurse, she knows that there are people who are more well-equipped to handle her than her own family could. If she's going to be the source of the primary conflict in this movie, at least she's doing it with her heart in the right place. Bridget gets called down for breakfast one morning, and she hears a strange noise coming from her mirror where- OH MY GOD! <laughs> Damn it! how many kids' movies am I going to have to put sensor bars over? Hi, I'm coming, Mom. She goes downstairs, where she invents the Carl's Jr. breakfast menu, and she talks about hearing strange voices from her closet. When I was little, I heard voices in my mirror, too. Yeah, I think putting Grams in a home just might be the best thing to do. We then see Bridget having a tea party to welcome Sweet William into the fold, when she hears another strange sound coming from her closet. Well, hi, Vicky! Oh my god! I can't say hello. You always do that when you get Stay away from me, demon! Stay away! Dear lord, is that thing creepy! I'm gonna have nightmares for weeks! We've been watching you through the mirror for a long time! Who's we? Why are you watching little girls? Why does it sound like you swallowed A.G. Bear's voice box? What are you? My name is Huggins. You're frowning. Excuse me. You're just terrifying as Santa's owl. Huggins... <laughs> Huggins explains how she's the leader of the hug -a bunch who do nothing but hug all day. Oh! <laughs> that feels really good! What's that? We call them Hugworks. Sparkle's real good when you get a real honest clinching clinger. So, it's a stool softener? Huggins somehow knows that her brother isn't all that into hugging, but she'll have none of that. I'll charm his teeth right out of his gums. I'm gonna love him so hard he'll wish he'd never been born! They go to teach Andrew the true meaning of terror, but when they don't find him, Huggins just wipes one of his baseball caps. Stealing's okay when you're cute, you see. Here's Huggins! After Huggins accidentally gets run through the wash, they go back to Bridget's room to get her all dried off. Thanks, movie. Seeing this thing naked was at the top of my to-do list today. She tells Huggins about what's been going on with Grams, and Huggins may have the solution to her problem. Plenty of affection and lots of hugging. That's what makes us huggers go. Well, hugging's well and good, but it won't make my Grams any younger. I just wondered if there's a medicine that could make people younger. Hugging! We stop with that? I'm talking medicine, for heaven's sakes. No! Hugging! Hugging is the solution to every problem! Hugging will make all the bad things go away! Why would you let me hug you?! While Huggins herself may not have the answers that Bridget needs, she thinks that someone called the Bookworm might be able to help her. Whenever a hugger has a question, we ask the Bookworm. He's smart! A talking worm? Give me a break. Kid, you're talking to a living plush toy who looks like Chucky in drag. Why is a talking Bookworm outside the realm of possibility? So they go to find the bookworm in the magical hug land which happens to be on the other side of Bridget's mirror. But how do they walk through it? First we gotta get it real squishy. Come on, I need your hug! 
Okay, this whole hugging thing is only getting creepier by the second. Oh, why, yes, I can help you. But first, you have to hug me. Keep hugging. Yes. Almost there. Never show her asking that while she's at crotch height ever again! Why won't you come with us? Oh, I intend to. So she goes through the mirror now that it's all squishy, and... Yeah, we've pretty much just gone into Wonderland here. They meet another hugger named Hugsy, who's dressed like a Chippendales dancer for some reason. And then they meet some other huggas. And how do they greet each other? Take a wild guess! We hug! <laughs> oh yes, I forgot. Brothers gotta hug. <laughs> this is ever so much better than shaking hands. Makes you feel good all over. <laughs> and it tickles, too. <laughs> Don't forget me, I'm Tweaker! Oh yeah, she's Tweaker, and I'm positive that she's the only one. Ah, uh, she do a lot of hugging around here. That's why we're huggers. Haha, <laughs> we've been doing hugs since before the world began. What, the huggers are some kind of ancient race? I don't remember seeing them in Lord of the Rings. After meeting every other little hugga monster who has no bearing on the plot, and singing a little song that will forever haunt your nightmares, Bridget, Huggins, and Hugsy ride off in a wagon to get to the bookworm. They finally get to the bookworm, who, appropriately enough, lives in a pile of giant books. You'd think the bookworm would be a little more organized than this, but whatever. Nobody can see the Great Oz, not nobody, not know how! I kid, I kid. What does the bookworm really sound like? Library cards issued only on Thursdays. Go away. Because having a little girl enter a magical fantasy world through the looking glass wasn't enough, they have to make this bookworm sound literally like the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland. W a T F. She asks the bookworm if there's any way to make her grandma younger, and there are two ways that that can happen. One is to give her lots and lots of hugs. Are you sensing a theme here? And the other is to give her fruit from the youngberry tree. The fruit must be taken from the tree and eaten, but never touch the ground, or it will disappear. Poof. And where's the only place they can get young berries? The country of shrugs, which is somehow the worst thing in Huggerland. It would also seem that the only way into the country of shrugs is to go into the book where Ryder McDowell was trying to kill Batman and Robin. That's only way? One entrance. That's it. Well? What are you standing there for? Thought you wanted to save your grandmother. I do! I do! Then go into the deep, dark hole where no one will ever find you. So they do jump in, and... Wow, is this disappointing. The Land of Shrugs is built up as this twisted, evil realm, and it looks about as scary as a postcard. They walk along the not-yellow brick road, which was built on its side for some reason, and they reach the castle from the Dark Crystal. But then they're set upon by a hulking, fire-breathing mammoth! Well... Do it! You know you want to hug it! You know you want to give it a nice, big, squishy hug! That's the only thing you huggers know how to do! What are you waiting for?! Hug it! HUG IT! way I look at it, he's just another animal. And animals need love just as much as we do. That's right, kids. The next time you run into something that wants you dead, just hug it and it'll turn into a heffalump. 
And come on! These Huggas have been dreading the monsters from the Land of Shrugs for countless millennia, and none of them ever thought to hug any of them before now? Hugging is what your entire culture revolves around! How did you never think of doing this before? Anyway, they get inside the castle to get to the only young berry tree in the entire land, but they then meet the evil queen from Snow White. She orders her army of California raisins to take the Huggas to the dungeon, and what does she do with Bridget? I was frozen today! And now, we can both admire me! Just marvel at my wide, manly jaw. Ooh, I look like Adam West. The elephant busts them out of their cell, which is why you don't make dungeons out of styrofoam. And shock of all shocks, all they need to do to free Bridget from the evil spell is to hug her. Are you really surprised? They use the key that the queen just happened to leave out where anyone can get to it to unlock the tree, and they get a handful of berries to take back with them. But the queen shows up and scares them off, and the cage closes with the key inside. And because she can no longer get her hourly berry fix, she immediately ages into an old woman and dies. So, I guess Grams is gonna have to eat one of these berries every hour on the hour for the rest of her life? She doesn't even have enough to last her a day! She makes it back home, but drops the berries and they vanish! Um... why? Yes, the bookworm said they'd vanish if they touched the ground, but technically that's not the ground they're touching. With no other options at her disposal, all that Bridget can do is just hug her Grams as she says goodbye. Which actually makes Andrew break down and show her how much he's going to miss her, too. So with all this love and affection going around, Aunt Ruth can't bear to take her mom to the home, and they all live happily ever after. Except for Sweet William, who was presented to us as if he would be following Bridget on this adventure, but that just never happened. And so, that was the Hug-A-Bunch movie. And it's... Weird. Really, really weird. To be fair, I do like the scenes with Bridget and Grams. You really feel just how close they are, and how something as simple as her moving out really is that big of a crisis. But to take a problem this serious and try to solve it with some magical adventure where she learns that anything is possible through the power of hugging is just misleading. Yes, love and affection can be powerful things, but not every problem is going to be solved just by hugging it away. And what was the point of this journey anyway? It's not like she needed to learn how to be more affectionate with her grandma, she already knew all that she needed to know in that regard. Frankly, this movie should have been about Andrew. He's kind of antisocial, he has trouble expressing his emotions, he's the one with the biggest character arc here. The puppetry in this is actually pretty good, but the Hugga world and the Huggas themselves are just plain creepy. Every problem in the world can be solved through the magic of hugging? Yeah, there's no way that can be taken out of context. And seriously, a kid's movie like this should not make it this easy for me to make inappropriate jokes about it. If you want a movie that's based on a toy that's based on the power of love, I suggest you just stick with the Care Bears. See you next time. And never forget, boys and girls, every problem in the world can be solved with the power of hugging. Oh my god, I lost my job. Hugging! Oh my god, I broke my leg! Hugging! Oh my god, there's a nuclear bomb falling! Hugging!
subscribe, like, follow, comment.